We are with North Texas and Seth Luttrell parting ways. Phil Bennett, interim defensive co our defensive coordinator, interim head coach for their bowl game coming up. And Gabe Brooks, a UNT alum, worked for 247 Sports, of course, with recruiting. And we've known Gabe for a, quite some time. Gabe, there was some... Uh, there was a little bit of, wait a minute, 44 and 44, had a pretty good year the last couple of years, had to pull themselves out of a ditch a few times. But then you got deep into a lot of analytics of what UNT has been through and your thoughts about him getting fired yesterday. Yeah, I think from a, you know, from a outsider perspective, as far as just seeing the record at the end of the year, uh, you know, you see six and six, lose a bowl game last year. Uh, seven and five, lose conference championship this year. Um, you know, I, I can understand some folks who don't follow it week to week, um, kind of being perplexed by it. But, you know, I think the big things are, uh, the, the, the non conference losses, especially against fellow group of five opponents. Um, North Texas has not beaten a, an FBS non-conference opponent since September of 2018. Uh, that's 13 losses in a row in that category. They've lost 11 consecutive group of five non-con games. That includes, you know, getting drubbed by SMU a couple times. That includes 58-27 loss at UNLV this year. You know, UNLV fired its coach at the end of the season. Um, it, you know, there's a lot of, there's a lot of, uh, outside the league, um, uh, pretty heavy losses. You know, like you said, 44 and 44, I believe 22 of those 44 losses were by 20 points or more. So, uh, and you know, UAB in conference, this is a, a program that, that was ended, uh, a few years ago. And I believe uh, 0 and 4 against UAB, uh, four consecutive losses. Uh, and, you know, it, there's there's just some. Uh, I really think that last year, you know, they upset UTSA uh, at home in a, a cold, rainy, wet environment. Um, I, that I think it's pretty clear based on what the statement that was released last night that if that had not happened, that the move would have happened last year. Gabe, what do you see for the the future of candidates? Who who are they looking at? What kind of scheme? As they also have to have someone who helps move them into a new conference with some excitement. Yeah, so you know, I, I think there's a, a lot of stuff going around right now, like a lot of names being thrown out. Uh, as far as stuff, you know, perspective on the inside, I hadn't heard a lot yet. You know, I, I put a name out there it's just as a name that I. Uh, as an alum who follows the recruiting and scouting and college game pretty closely, uh, I think Emmett Jones uh, would be an excellent fit. Um, one thing I've heard for quite a while now, several years, from a lot of my high school contacts, uh, is is not the the most glowing endorsement of North Texas's uh, reputation uh, with the high schools. You know, I've had. I've, I've had, uh, you know, schools in very high traffic uh, re recruiting areas, you know, along I-20 on the, the south side of Dallas and areas like that tell me that you could probably count on one hand the number of times that, that the Latrell staff has, has been there uh, uh, visiting. So that just shouldn't happen. And, and, you know, a guy like Emmett Jones – um, obviously that would change instantly. Um, you know, I think a lot of people like the Garrett Riley name. I think Eric Morris would make a lot of sense. Uh, I, I you know, I, I think with the success Jeff Trailer has had, with Joey McGuire has shown in just one year at Texas Tech, I think that getting, I think something that North Texas has missed for a long time across multiple regimes is a direct connection to the Texas high school football brand and why if you're in DFW which arguably is the number one metro area for recruiting in the country you know maybe it's number two to Miami Dade but why would you not lean heavy into that if you're in North Texas 
Gabe, how long do you think uh, this decision was kind of in the works? Well, it sounded like, you know, he. it sounded like it almost happened last year. And then they they were one and six, and they reeled off the winning streak to get bowl eligible. Um, I, you know, I think that after they, honestly, they laid an egg in a bowl game against a team that was a far inferior roster uh, that, that had gone, I think the it was their first FBS non-con win in a long time, uh, Miami of Ohio. Uh, you know, I think that they probably should have just gone ahead and done it because, you know, you let the guy go seven and five and it's a decent year. Um, it's a good year. You play in the conference championship game. Um, it, I think that that really is why it kind of has a bad look on the outside. So I think it's been in the works for quite a while. Um, you know, one thing that is certain is that. North Texas, and, and, and one guy who, who deserves a lot of credit is Luke Valerius, the chief of staff who spearheads their personnel. North Texas has had year over year over year for about five years as good top-to-bottom personnel as they've ever had. And he deserves a ton of credit for that. He's going to wind up – he's going to be good wherever he winds up. Um, but, you know, I talk to coaches – you know, I've heard behind the scenes coaches in the other, uh, you know, programs in that conference that the, they would trade rosters with North Texas in a heartbeat. And, uh, you know, you, you can you can go six and six and, and kind of underachieve with that kind of roster and all the, the uh, investments that the, the school has made and, you know, the highest paid coach in the conference until trailer got the deal a year ago, the extension. And I think that once you dig into it, that it's kind of, kind of makes a lot more sense as to why they would make this move at this point. Gabe, uh, one name that was thrown out also as a part of the just speculation was Graham Harrell now at West Virginia, but was, since he was under Seth Luttrell under his staff originally, do you think that works against him? I think that there's probably two camps torn on that. I think there's some people who probably like the idea because there's a lot of familiarity and that was the Macy fine days. You know, that was a, the, the I, that, that 2018 team went nine and three and lost in the bowl game to go nine and four. They had Mason fine. They had three receivers who, who are in or have been in the NFL, Jalen Guyton, Jalen Darden, Rico Bussey. Um, had a couple defensive guys playing the NFL, but you know, on the flip side, uh, they they lost three games uh, that they led by double digits uh, after kind of going into a shell offensively and playing conservative. That includes a twenty-eight nothing lead at Old Dominion that they blew and lost thirty-four thirty-one. Um, so there's some of that that left a bad taste in some folks' mouth. Um, but, I, you know, I, as far as a young guy who's offensive-oriented, I think that's the only way to go nowadays for a group of five and obviously has the Texas high school connections. So I, I can kind of see both sides of that one. Gabe, do uh, how much does this have to do with the, the conference move, too? I think it has to have quite a bit to do with it. And, you know, I, I this is just me, my own speculation. I think the success of the men's basketball program under Grant McCaslin uh, might have, you know, that might indirectly put some pressure on football uh, because, you know, North Texas was, was close to consecutive uh, big dance births. Uh, you know, in, in the previous year, they upset Purdue in the first round. Um Last year, I think they were 25 and four and uh, got to the second round of the NIT and went to overtime against Virginia, which is where they number one right now. So, number two, somewhere up there. So, um, you know, Grant McCaslin, uh, I, I think what they've done in basketball has kind of indirectly put some pressure on, on football, especially because of the conference move. And maybe what Trailer's done at UTSA. There was one name. Somebody just texted me, and I know, Gabe, we got to go, and you do as well. What about Justin Fuente? You know, I've heard that name a lot, and, and I think that that was tied with, with Ren Baker, the outgoing AD. It was the buzz I had always heard there. 
I don't know if there's remains some connection still, maybe some of the, you know, the interim uh, athletic staff, there, there may be some connection, but I, you know, I, I, I don't want to use the word retread because that's not really fair to him, but um, you know, the, 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 somebody like Emmett Jones or, or Garrett Riley or Eric Morris, some, some newer blood, um, I think would be, I think your goal as a G5 is to just hire good up and comer after good up and comer. And I think that, that going that direction would be the way to go. Gabe, great to hear from you. Thanks for your time. Good luck over the next few weeks as you grind towards National Signing Day with what you do with 247. Thank you. Appreciate y'all. Gabe Brooks, again, 247 Sports, a UNT alum. And then 